長，各位同學 ，A J， 大家好，歡迎大家嚟臨由香港大學新聞及傳媒研究中心 H K U Journalism and Media 舉辦嘅新聞學課程簡介會。我係陳尚軒 Sally， 港大新聞學嘅四年級學生，亦都係今日嘅大會司儀。相信各位家長同同學都好有興趣，想了解港大新聞學嘅課程內容。希望大家可以透過今日嘅活動，了解我哋更加多。今日嘅簡介會，首先我哋會播放一段新聞廣播嘅示範，然後我哋就會講解大家最關注嘅收生要求。我哋都邀請咗一啲我哋學系嘅舊生同大家分享一下佢哋嘅經驗。最後我哋會設有問答嘅環節嚟去解答大家嘅疑問。除咗新聞學之外，我哋嘅課程都會要求同學修讀第二主修。H K U Journalism and Media 嘅課程提供各種唔同嘅機會，俾同學可以學習唔同嘅新聞傳播技巧，同認識更加多嘅媒體。我哋嘅第二主修科選擇嘅範疇都非常之廣泛，包括社會學、商業、經濟同埋文學院等等嘅課程。港大新聞學入面，非本地生嘅人數大概佔學生總人數嘅一半，所以同學都會有好多唔同嘅機會接觸唔同國家嘅學生，有更加國際化嘅視野。另外，數碼化都係其中一項我哋非常之注重嘅元素。H K U Journalism and Media 嘅廣播室可以俾同學體驗電視同廣播新聞嘅工作。由學生組成嘅 T V News Demo Team 就準備咗一條短片介紹 H K U Journalism and Media 嘅課程，請大家細心欣賞。Welcome to the special edition of HKU Journalism and Media's news broadcast demonstration. My name is Hiva Khan, and this is my co-host Wisely Lau. 歡迎各位收睇 HKU Journalism and Media 現場新聞報導。我係羅浩宇。今日我哋會同大家睇下電視新聞報導製作，等大家體驗一下我哋喺呢度可以學到嘅嘢。係做功課嘅時候，好多時都需要報導香港。甚至世界各地嘅社會問題，而同學學到嘅唔單止係新聞報導、寫作，仲有溝通技巧。我哋除咗要修讀新聞有關嘅課程之外，都需要修讀另外一個主修科，例如金融、經濟、音樂，等我哋可以學習到其他唔同行業嘅知識，令同學畢業之後更加容易投身到唔同行業，包括本地甚至國際嘅傳媒以及公關公司等等。That's right. HKU Journalism and Media encourages our students to think globally through our popular exchange programs. Students can apply for semester or year-long exchange programs at top journalism schools in North America and Europe. This is in addition to other HKU exchange programs that students can apply for at more than 100 universities around the world. Journalism majors are also required to take an additional major. After graduating, we can work in different sectors like local and international media as well as public relations. In addition to HKU Journalism and Media's many exchange opportunities, students are engaged with the local Hong Kong community in all kinds of ways. Third year student Denise Ramos produced a report on how young Hong Kongers are turning to thrifting for their fashion needs. Let's take a look. Hong Kong has been kept in the dark when it comes to eco-friendly fashion habits. From well-known brands like Zara to Uniqlo, fast fashion has always dominated the city. Consumer habits don't make it any better, with two in five Hong Kongers keeping clothes for only a year or less. Unlike a third of Hong Kongers who throw their clothes in the rubbish, Lisa Rai has formed a habit of giving away her unwanted clothes. I would like to give a new house to the clothes I don't wear anymore instead of dumping it. Therefore, I usually donate clothes. With the decreasing purchasing power from the pandemic, more people are found to be on the receiving end of unwanted clothes, prompting its prevalence on social media and subsequently to youngsters. 80% of U.S. Gen Z consumers say that there is no stigma associated with buying used fashion. Lisa has also joined in on the fun of thrifting, completing her eco-cycle of giving and receiving secondhand clothes. I like 
thrifting because I like finding gems in this or the shops like some unique item it gives me a sense of accomplishment my fashion style can be one of a kind thrifting is fun in Hong Kong because there are many stores that you think that you wouldn't have cute clothes or like your style but like once you go in those stores you will find something very cute uh, I usually thrift uh, things that are like unique or pretty because in thrifting places you get unique clothes where other people wouldn't have so that's like the fun of thrifting. Nisa's pursuit of individualism reflects that of many Gen Z shoppers where over 70% of them were found to thrift for unique items. However, this number only stands true in the US which leads us to the question of Hong Kong's overall situation. Petty Lee is a project manager of Green Ladies and Green Little a second-hand store that sells ladies' wear and kids' wear. While the upcycling of clothes is gaining traction, Lee believes that Hong Kong still has room for improvement. Hong Kong people, or even the Asian people, uh, there still be a stigma to the uh, second-hand clothing. Throughout the last three years, some of them uh, will think that they uh, have more concern about the hygiene of the second-hand clothing. The other part, there are less and less chance for them to travel, so they are more uh, like uh, trying to find something different in Hong Kong. Somehow it's like a treasure hunt for them. Having a treasure hunt in a crowded city is as hard as finding a needle in a haystack. The same can be said for eliminating fast fashion brands in Hong Kong. Although it is difficult, it is not impossible. Hong Kong is a fast-paced city with even faster changes in fashion trends and consumption habits. However, if we learn fast enough, we can make thrifting and donating clothes the new normal. Denise Ramos, HKU Journalism, Hong Kong. Whether overseas or here at home, a world of opportunities is available to everyone who is a Bachelor of Journalism student here at HKU. HKU Journalism is located in the second oldest building on campus, which is Elliott Hall. While the structure here is historic, inside we enjoy state-of-the-art facilities like this industry standard TV studio, production labs, and a podcast studio for group interviews. HKU Journalism and Media These are just few of the items on a long list of how we keep up with the technology. All the most updated digital editing tools and equipment are here. Hi, Hiba. Now over to Kayla Lee for the weather report. Thank you, Hiba. The northeast monsoon now affecting the coast of Guangdong will moderate on Saturday. The weather will be generally fine over the region. A strong northeast monsoon will affect the coast of southern China early to midweek next week. It will be windy over the region. Meanwhile, a broad area of low pressure will bring unsettled weather to the central and northern parts of the South China Sea. Rain and clouds will cover the coast of Guangdong. A cold front is expected to reach southern China in the latter part of next week. Temperatures will fall over the region. And that's for the weather forecast for the upcoming week. Back to you, Wisely. To find out more about the program information offered by HKU Journalism and Media, please visit our website at jmsc.hku.hk. We also have a Facebook page and an Instagram account. That's all for now. We hope this has been helpful. Thank you for your company. This is Hiba Khan. And I'm Wisely Lau. HKU, HKU Journalism, Journalism and Media and News. TV News Double Team
學為我哋準備嘅短片，而家就有請我哋嘅課程總監 AJ 同大家講解一下新聞學嘅收生要求。Now we'd like to invite A.J. Libanow, I Director of Bachelor of Journalism Program, to outline the entrance requirements for our four-year program. A.J., please. Hey, give me the mic. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our program talk today. Uh, I'm really happy you guys took the time out of your busy schedules to join us. Um, wasn't that pretty cool? Those were done by first-year students, Wisely and Eva. You'll see them out in the booths, so if you want to know what their experience was like doing the video, go talk to them, uh, and you'll learn a lot from them. Uh, but today, I'm going to talk about program admissions-related stuff uh, for Bachelor of Journalism. If you guys don't know, uh, our program, our department is held in Elliott Hall, which is the second oldest building on campus. Our department has only been around for 25 years, the program only 19 years, so it's quite young. But despite the fact that it's young, uh, we've been able to do a lot of great things with it through our students. Um, you might have seen our tagline, it's a communications focused double major degree for the digital age. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? It's a mouthful. Right? Well, basically what it means is it's all about experiential learning. The way our students learn is very practical, hands-on. You saw from the video, you're using cameras, you're in the broadcast studio, you're out in Hong Kong uh, doing stories. All right, so if you like hands-on practical work, that's what you do with our program. If you'd rather just study your books in the classroom, we're not very good at that. All right, so if you like hands-on, we're not bad. Digital skills and platforms, we're not just about writing. We're not just about um, being an anchor in front of the TV. All right? There are video journalists, there are communicators, there are people in communications, I should say. All right, so not just journalists. Liberal style arts or liberal arts style education. What that means is that students who do the bachelor journalism program they get to customize their education experience. There's a second major that's required from all of our students. Right. And then global focus. Right. Um, our instructors are coming from all parts of the world, and then our students as well are coming from all parts of the world as well. Not just from Hong Kong. The majority are from Hong Kong, but there are students that are coming from you know, Japan, China. Uh, Philippines, New Zealand, Australia, you name it. You've had students who come from uh, all around. That's great. Actually, we love it like that. Right? And you might be wondering, oh, it's in English. Oh, so much in English, right? That's okay, right? The reason why we do it in English is because it's the language that we all uh, have in common to talk to each other. Right? For a lot of us, English is not our first language. Right? But it's the language we have in common. Right? So, but if you have other languages you speak, that's actually an advantage for you. Right? If you speak Cantonese, Mandarin, Tagalog, Korean, right? that's actually an advantage to tell stories about communities. You might be wondering, what are the courses that we have to offer? Right? You don't have to read the whole list, that's okay. But just an idea of what we do. You know, obviously, you have to do reporting, writing. You have to do video news production. But one of the cool things that we're doing with the Bachelor of Journalism is that we're expanding what we do. We know that our students, when they graduate, they might not necessarily want to do journalism, but they want to do something that's related to journalism, maybe in communications, right? Or maybe they want to work in an agency, for example, right? Or maybe they're more technical, right? The new courses we have just this semester, generative AI for media applications, we know that ChatGPT and generative AI is big, so we have a course, we quickly came up with a course to discuss that and work on that. Strategic communications, right? Like I said, some of our students want to do something that's not in journalism, but still use their storytelling skills, right? So strategic communication is a, is a new area we're in. And also our students have expressed that they still want to do journalism, even though it's an English language program, but they want to know how to report and write in Cantonese. So we have a Chinese news writing course that we're bringing back in the second semester. All right, so for those of you guys who want to report in local Cantonese, we're going to have a course for that. So we're very flexible. It's one of the great things about our program. And there's more. There's more than just that. Like I mentioned earlier, and sorry it's a bit small on the screen, but it's a required second major. I need to stress this. It's a required second major. So whether you like it or not, when you finish our program, you will finish with a Bachelor of Journalism and a second major of your choice. 
of your choice, which is pretty cool. It's like two for the price of one, right? The popular choices from our students, global creative industries, a lot of our students are very creative in the storytelling. Marketing is very popular, second major. Politics and public administration and uh, finance, those are the top four popular ones. But the great thing is that we don't force our students to choose any of these second majors. The more interesting part is the ones that are not so uh, common. Computer science, we've had students who double major in journalism and computer science. Journalism and economics. Journalism and fine arts. Geography, Korean, music. Right? So again, our program is very flexible in that sense. Journalism for us is a platform to talk about any kind of stories you want. Right? So you know, if you are interested in journalism, but then you also have an interest in something else, it's possible that you can double major in that. And actually the list, I know it's small, but the list is pretty expansive. If you look on the web for just second, or second majors in Hong Kong U, all of those you can double major in. I mean, not at the same time, obviously, but one plus Bachelor of Journalism, right? So Spanish in Journalism, Criminology in Journalism, Chemistry in Journalism, all okay, right? And imagine the power of that combination. All right, that's pretty cool. Cool? All right. In the video, we talked about exchange. Um, what was meant by the exchange talk is that in addition to the hundreds that Hong Kong U already provides in terms of exchange opportunities, we have our own partners as well, right? That have more journals of courses that you can take, right? So if there's courses that we don't offer, our partners might have that, right? So a course in advertising at UNC in the States, for example. Or maybe you just want to go abroad and experience life uh, abroad. We have direct partners that our students can go directly into for exchange, right? So actually the choice is more than just the Hong Kong U worldwide exchange. Right, so we have three schools in the United States and we have three schools in Europe. And these are some of the most prestigious journalism schools in the world. All right, so Mizzou is the oldest journalism university in the States. Uh, the DMJX, the Danish school, is the oldest journalism school in Europe. Right, we're partners with them. Right, so that's pretty exciting. And those are our students. They're there. Angela's there. <laughs> Uh, the other thing when it comes to hand-on practical training, uh, our students, you will be required to actually do an internship. You have no choice. You must actually apply your skills in a news or media or communications organization, which is pretty cool. You actually get to apply that, and actually that goes on your CV. So by the time you graduate, you already have experience, work experience on your resume. Right? And if you look at the list, this list is not all of our partners. This is actually the list of internships that I can put, find the logo for quickly. There's actually a lot more than just that. I saw the list, it is crazy. Right? But you'll notice some of them. Obviously, it's local places like SCMP, RTHK, Now, Cable. But then also, uh, regional and international news organizations have our students in their offices. Right, uh, CNN makes sense. AP, AFP, right? Bloomberg, right? These are some of the top news organizations around the world. And then you're looking at, you know, HC Communications, Flash and Pillard, Edelman, all right. So if you want real world experience, unfortunately, you have to do it. You know, you can't just hide behind your books. You will have to go out and work for eight weeks as a journalism student, which is great. Yes. And the great part about it is. We have someone, we have a career counselor who will work with you to find those internships. So you're not alone. You're not alone. We will help you every step of the way. Right? You might be thinking, oh, AJ, what kind of jobs will I get? What kind of jobs will I get? Well, these are some of the jobs that our alumni have pursued after they graduated. South China Morning Post Cadet, TV News Anchor, Content Marketing Strategist, Solicitor? Educator, right? With the journalism degree, they're able to pursue all these different fields, right? Not just journalism, right? It's quite expansive. And you're thinking, oh, but the job market is no good. There's no jobs for journalists. Well, according to the latest survey from Manpower Group, apparently, according to this quarter, uh, the expected increase in sta staffing is expected to increase by 48% for this quarter. Right? So there are jobs. There are jobs, 
Right? I wouldn't be worried about that. And here's a another logo list, of course, but these are some of the some, just some of the employers around the world that have hired our journalism students. Alright. So again, you'll recognize some of the list from our internship list, but there's more around the world. Like my Apple, Google is there too. Not just journalism. Right? Imagine different corporations need uh, a communications arm. Who are they gonna get? Journalists, of course. All right. So not just your typical LinkedIn, uh, makes sense. New York Times, NBC. And the cool part about this, it's not just work. Some of our students go on to further education, masters, PhDs. Yeah, so. so you might be thinking, wow, that sounds great. You know, what, what do these students look like that, that get these careers? Right? Well, they look just like you guys, right? Students of our program, Harvey Kong, he's a current SCMP reporter. He just graduated a couple years ago and he's a reporter. And you're thinking, but how did he get there? What's the steps you need to take to get there? Well, his second major, politics and public administration. That makes sense, right, as a reporter. His internship experience. He did internships with AFP and AP, right? Really big uh, international news organizations. So that experience there as a student. The courses he took, he took photography, he took public affairs reporting, right? So those electives, you get to choose. Not everybody will want to take photography, not everybody will want to take public affairs reporting. But he was interested, and it kind of makes sense in terms of the track that he took to become a reporter. But again, I know some of you guys, I don't want to be a reporter, that's okay. Check this guy out, Gabriel Fung. He just graduated a year ago or so, two years ago. He's now at Oxford, pursuing an MPhil in international relations. When he came, he wasn't really gonna be a journalist, he was more interested in research, right? So he took our course in media research. He was also politics and public administration second major, but he was more interested in research. And so that led him to pursuing a master's in Oxford. <coughs> and we love that. We think it's great. Uh, next guy, Elder Teo. He's now a data scientist at the National University of Singapore. He, also, I don't know why we have a lot of people that go to Oxford, uh, but he also went to Oxford. Uh, he graduated in 2019, I think, I forget. But he also went to Oxford. And when he was a student with us, he took a lot of our data research, social media courses, because that was his interest. And so you can see the pathway that he took. He took those courses. He found uh, one of our professors, you know, his, his expertise is in data and digital social media analytics, for example. He took his courses, got guidance from him, and he went to Oxford, and now he's an actual data scientist. Through the journalism program, which is insane, I think. <coughs> Sorry. Audrey Kavilova, uh, she's now the vice president of communications at Batixis. It's a French corporate and investment banking uh, company. Previously, he also he's worked at Fidelity International, Bank of America Merrill Lynch. He worked at before right after university. Right. She had a more global focus. She took international news, digital media society, so you can kind of see her pathway from that. Right. So she's communication, using her journalism skill to do corporate communications, internal communication, talking about the, uh, the company stuff and spreading it outside. Evelyn Yet, this is a funny one. She's an investment analyst. Like, what? What are you talking about? Investment analyst? Right. She took business and financial journalism, which is an elective, that's fine. But her AFP, her Agence France Press internship experience was interesting because her news story that she wrote was about financial pyramid schemes abroad. So even in her internship, she was writing financial stories. And so it made sense that she wanted to go into something that's related to finance or money or whatnot. And this one's just for fun, but Nicholas Lung, he graduated a while ago, but he was the 2022 uh, Hong Kong Film Awards winner for the best original film song. But he was a journalism uh, major, but he did Chinese language and literature as a second major. But after he graduated, he became a broadcast journalist, then a creative director, then a lyricist, and then a winner, All right? So you kind of see this path. He went from journalism to more creative, creative, creative to get into where you uh, got to now, all right? So all of those students were journalism majors, degree majors, right? They did our program, they were our students. 
And the tracks they take, they took, we're quite proud of them. We're very proud of them. All right. So our expectation for students is you don't have to do journalism. We just want to make sure that you follow what you want to do. And a lot of you guys, I'm guessing you're here just because you're creative. You're probably storytellers at heart. You're curious. And if that's you, you'll probably fit in very well. And so now you're thinking, Asia, this sounds great. This sounds like a fantastic program. I hope it does. How do I get in? For a lot of you guys, <laughs> now it's like, oh, this is the slide I want to see. All right. I think a lot of you guys know the numbers already, but if you're coming from the Juba scheme, DSC, we're looking for 24. Well, I think that's reasonable, 24. And the other part you should know is we do interviews in June, from June 12 to June 14. If you put us in your van A, you will be invited for an interview in June for the Juba scheme. Right? And I, here's another hint for you guys. Yes, band A is okay, but if you, we usually fill our numbers with band A1 people. Just a hint, hint, right? Band A1. But band A if you want the interview. And the other part that we need to make clear is that our program, if you want to become a journalism major, you can only do it by applying directly to us. Right? So not through social science, but through us. Right? That's the only way you can double major with journalism. So just remember the code, the code 6822. If you are really interested in our program, 6822, if you want to become a journalism major. All right, cool, so far so good. And then I know some of you guys are probably coming from you know, non jupis all good. If you're doing IB, 34 is the score we're looking for. GCE, 1A star, 2A. And then for SAT, AP, 1380, and then uh, Minimum three and three subjects for the AP score. Okay. And then interviews will be held in December. Actually, it's coming up. All right, very soon. So, yeah, that's it. Cool. Cool. All right. And, oh, <laughs> if you want to contact us, jmscbhq.hk, you saw it on the video before, you can email us at jmscbhq.hk. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Ruby. <laughs> uh, Ruby's our intern director uh, and her Academy Award that I got to touch for a few seconds. But anyways, that's it for me. We'll have Q&A in a little bit. But uh, Celine, where'd you go? I don't, I'm not gonna give you the mic. <laughs> Thank you, AJ. So now it's time for our Beyond the Violin panel. May I introduce our esteemed alumni, Kelly Chu from the class of 2019. <laughs> Angela Liu from the class of 2016. And Isabel Wong from the class of 2017. They'll be speaking on their respective illustrious careers with our moderator, our recent 2022 alum, and Chen. So hello everyone, my name is Anne. Um, I'm now a journalist at LTHK. So um, five or six years ago, I was here, like you guys, like um, want to know more about this program, maybe want to know more like what I can get from this program. And today we're joined by three successful alumni here. Um, so um, can you all like briefly introduce yourself first and then and also tell us how you end up um, doing a career outside journalism. Thank you, Anne, and thank you, HQ Journalism, for having me. Maybe I'll start first. Um, so my name is Isabel. I graduated back in 2017. So um, where should I start? Uh, my story started when I was um, at the age of five when I really wanted to be in journalism. And that's when I started working towards joining like a journalism degree and I ended up at HKU and there I was thinking okay I made it to journalism then I'm probably going to be um, doing journalism for the rest of my life but how wrong was I? So after graduating from HKU journalism I was actually in journalism for a little bit as a TV news anchor and producer uh, mainly in financial journalism with organizations including um, Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance, um, cable TV's English news channel and then something magical happened at some point in my career which was um, the CEO of my previous firm um, Link which is a 
international tech startup, she reached out to me. She asked, we are looking for someone who could build, establish, and lead a content department for the company. She was asking me, are you interested in that? And I was like, hmm, interesting. So as a journalist, I can actually lead a content department for a tech startup. It sounded like a very interesting challenge to me, so I kind of jumped at it. And, um, and for two years, I established a global content operation for the firm. And um, the firm mainly operates in the finance and investment management industry. And uh, my team sat across Hong Kong, Mumbai, and New York. And um, the team basically served as a pretty meaningful engine of growth for the firm, um, fund, I mean, feeding into the development of marketing and sales, um, client relationship management, stakeholder management, and also global communications efforts. And um, under the team, um, we also came up with some really creative international campaigns that kind of raised our profile for the firm. And then from after two years of doing that, I started wondering, how far could I go as a journalism graduate? So that's when I joined Edelman, as some of you might know, is the world's largest PR consulting firm. And um, I was curious, like, can I use my journalism skills in, in other sectors beyond finance? So here I am at Edelman as the senior manager for corporate communications and content strategy. And my current client portfolio includes um, obviously my bread and butter finance and also hospitality, um, car manufacturing brand, technology. And some of my clients include Hong Kong Monetary Authority, um, HP, Nissan, uh, Marriott, Carlisle, private equity firm, and so on. And um, on the side, I also have some side projects going on. So um, I'm not completely out of journalism. So I also work as a freelance TV host, um, event MC moderator, um, mainly for global media and financial institutions. And also I have a side project called uh, a podcast called Proudly Asian, which was featured on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So I am kind of in this hybrid role where I'm in journalism, but also in marketing and communications and who knows where I'm going to be next. So that's my story. Thanks, uh, my name is Angela. Uh, I was like one of you um, because the truth is um, I was the first batch of Hong Kong DSE student intake for the HKU Bachelor of Journalism program. So yeah, so I was one of you uh, sitting in the audience seat like slightly over 10 years ago. And <laughs> <laughs> so like um, maybe I share a bit uh, during my study at HKU. Um, back in the days, I was quite de uh, determined that I wanted to take journalism as my major. But also, I was kind of still not yet determined whether journalism or the business side or doing a BBA instead. So, HKU Journalism offers you a high degree of flexibility because, as you heard from AJ, apart from the journalism major, you can also pick economics, finance, or other disciplines as your second major. So you have a more diversified choices after graduation. And um, during my study here, uh, I was the intern reporter for South China Morning Post uh, for reporting the two sessions in Beijing, uh, and also I was the summer intern at Information Government Services Department, uh, Sun Chu. And But after graduation, I took another path uh, I joined a global firm, uh, started as a research analyst for hedge funds research, and then I got promoted to research associate and also senior associate uh, before I left. And then I switched path to join civil service. Um, and I worked in uh, various organizations and departments. I was um, previously the judiciary executive at the Judiciary of Hong Kong SAR uh, under the corporate services uh, division. And recently, I joined the University Grants Committee Secretariat as a research administrator. So um, it's very, uh, you may find it quite different from uh, what I learned, right? You graduated with a journalism major degree, 
But after graduation, uh, you pick quite a different path. First, I joined the finance industry, and then now in the public services. Um, so I wanted to uh, share a bit my second major, uh, not finance, not economics, but I chose um, urban governance. So um, it gives you more opportunities to explore what your career uh, development and also the path you wanted to take next. And yeah, maybe that's a bit for me now, and I will pass the time to Kelly. Thank you. Um, so I'm Kelly. Um, let me just kind of briefly say like how did I come to where I am right now. So first of all, why did I choose journalism was really initially I wanted to do something maybe like a lucrative career, say like, I don't know, like business or even like some law or everything. Um, but then a lot of my friends back then kind of told me like, Kelly, you're not suited for that job. And so I went for like my gut feeling and my kind of like understanding my personality. So I ended up in journalism because, not because I wanted to be a journalist, but then it's more of like, I felt like this program was the best for my personality because ever since I was young, I've been in like a curiosity baby. Like I've been asking questions. I would ask so many questions that my mom would get so annoyed with me. So I was like, why don't I put those questions to kind of like something that I can do in my life? So that's how I went into journalism. And um, I feel like my path all the way from kind of like entering university all the way to right now I'm at the jockey club doing um, events and engagement. It's kind of down to luck, I would really say. Um, but it also luck with a little bit of effort. So it's kind of like I went to different internships. I did internship at CNN. Um, I did an inter PR internship at Fleshman Hillard. I also did like a marketing internship at PR Newswire. So all of these internships during school was actually given to me by the journalism program. One, it was from the career strategist um, just AJ mentioned. Um, they landed me the CNN as well, the PR Newswire, as well as, um, so the, one of the courses is strategic communications. And the teacher actually works at Fleshman Hillard and he offered me the intern. So it's kind of like um, building your connections and then eventually the opportunities will come to you, but then it's also up to you to take it. And um, I'm not much of a planner. I ended up graduating um, straight into the 2019 social unrest. And I ended up um, kind of being like a local fixers for foreign media. I worked with so many different medias, kind of like TV news for SBS, um, ABC. I've also worked with uh, digital platforms like Bloomberg, also radio, like NPR, um, also Humans of New York. So many different things to kind of just like tell the story of Hong Kong. Um, and but then I kind of shifted away from journalism because I was a little bit um, it was mentally taxing for me, especially everyone during that time. It was very tough. Uh, so I kind of went into Hong Kong UMed um, editorial. Um, I was doing their social media platform. That's how I got into digital marketing. And um, from there, I met my current boss right now. Um, she went to Jockey Club and then now I'm at the Jockey Club. So that's a little bit quick story of how luck kind of brought me here. So like, our, like students from our program, like their career path is not just limited to working in a newsroom, but also like PR, finance, or government. So um, I want to know more about like what kind of skills you have acquired from this program and like help you, con like help contribute to your um, career achievement. Maybe that's that with, um, Thanks. Um, I mean, going into the HQ journalism program, um, I mean, I, like I mentioned earlier, right, I thought I was going to be a journalist for the rest of my life. But one biggest takeaway when I graduated HQ journalism was that journalism is not only for journalism. And there are three main reasons why. For example, at HQ Journalism, they will teach you factual reporting, talking to multiple sources to achieve balanced reporting, right? But in real life, that translates into research skills, which are very much needed in any sector, industry, any role that you will be in. And number two, 
there will be also um, a heavy focus on fact checking. And in fact, HKU Journalism has one of the best known fact checking news labs in Asia Pacific. And if you're here and if you're interested in fact checking, and you should all be, you'll be in very good hands. And why fact checking is important? Because we don't want to be scammed, not just as a journalist, it will equip us to become more sensitive towards scam. But at the same time, in a professional setting, you don't want to be delivering your work that's not fact checked to your boss or to your clients, right? Um, if you deliver false information, that's just unprofessional. And number three, uh, I would say one of the main focuses or one of the questions that I would always get asked by my professors and lecturers at HKU Journalism back in the day was that every time I submitted my piece of work, whether it's video, whether it's a written story, their first question would be, who's your audience? And that's a question that you need to be prepared to answer for every piece of work that you submit at the JMS at HKU Journalism. And how that translates into the real life is that you always have to know your audience when you're speaking or when you're writing to someone. And being able to know your audience before you get your message across is what we call effective communication. And it's very important in any um, tasks, business meetings, negotiations that you will be in, um, in the professional setting. And the funny thing is the other day I was just interviewing a global KOL who is also known as an inventor herself. She was telling me that, Isabel, do you know that one of the main skills that are very much needed in the science world are storytelling and communications? Because scientists, they also have to explain what they do. They also have to explain the impact uh, why it's important for the world. It's not just, um, you know, it's not just the science itself. And so if I may bring up one more point is that um, throughout my career, I've been in some hiring positions where I got to hire my own team. And I would say every job that I got to hire my own team, I at least hired one to two HKU Journalism graduates in my team. And um, I would say that HKU Journalism graduates are highly hireable in the job market because of three reasons. They're actually able to think outside of the box. They are very hands-on, ready to hit the ground running, and also very street smart, not just book smart. Um, and how that translates into the real world is like, for example, if you're in the private sector, um, being able to establish media relations and also uh, being able to get the media interested in featuring your business is a very lucrative career itself. If you're in the public sector, I think Angela will be able to give more insights. Um, being able to get the policy directions across and um, communicate the messages of your bosses, government officials, to the media, being aware of what the media wants without getting into crisis is also a very sought after skill. And actually, crisis management in itself is a very lucrative career. So one example is that when I was working on a project for this central bank, um, the main work stream that we worked on was crisis preparedness and crisis management. What that means is um, mapping out sensitive issues on a global and regional scale and predicting sensitive questions that will be coming from the journalists and drafting responses to those sensitive questions and get the bosses and government officials prepared to take those questions. And that's what we called um, issues management or crisis preparedness type of work and that line of work is always led by ex-journalists and journalism graduates but um, I'll probably pass the mic on to other panelists as well. Thanks Isabel. Uh, so also uh, I would like to focus on the point of uh, communications. I think HKU journalism program prepares me well in terms of writing communications. Um, without the need to write a 10 pages report uh, to my boss about the task, uh, about different projects, um, from HKU Journalism Program, you learn how to, um, with just the essence of the words, you can communicate with others effectively. And also, you will be proficient in not just English, and also maybe in other languages, Cantonese, Mandarin, or some maybe in French, Spanish, as they needed in their daily job. And also, um, 
um, I would say, and also the network that you will uh, have. Because from my class, about half the students are from other countries and cities. Um, like Audrey was from Russia, um, and also we have class, our classmates from Canada, um, other uh, mainland China. We, we have a strong friendship. And even after we graduate, we may still have gatherings with each other, um, or even um, some career connections maybe at your job. Then I think um, because we are a program with a relatively small family, we know each other and we have the support even after graduation. Yeah, that's the most precious thing. Thank you. Um, actually, just adding on to both of their um, comments, one is effective um, communication as well as like the close knit um, connections that we have at the Hong Kong Journalism. And for me, um, I think like getting into university, um, I came from a background more like um, our school is not band one. Um, we're more just like, oh, happy go lucky. Um, we're very friendly with each other. Um, we don't have like amazing grades, but we have like just enough grades. Um, and then, so I don't really know about like how the society works in general, but then for journalism, Hong Kong journalism, it gave me a taste of what the society is kind of like. Um, I, I think like you guys are very familiar with the Chinese phrase like sick yang ho sick zi. Um, so this one like for me, um, in English it kind of briefly translates to um, your connection, your network is more important than your knowledge. And that um, lies very true to me because um, the career strategist actually I just mentioned earlier, he got my first internship, he got my first like freelance gig, he got my first full-time job, and we're now still connecting. I actually, he actually moved to the States and I recently visited him in Boston. Um, I think like it's, um, it kind of like journalism school kind of gives you a little opportunity to try to utilize these effective communication skills, to utilize these kind of like soft skills into like, how do you survive in the workplace? How do you survive in society? It is um, really kind of meeting everyone that you kind of want to meet, and then also making, giving them a good impression of you. The reason why like um, Kevin, the career strategist, he actually gave me all these opportunities was just like, Oh, um, so one of the um, fixers gigs was like, um, yeah, uh, I actually don't have a graduation job. And then so when I graduated, it was in um, the social unrest. And then she, he was like, oh, do you want to like work for this foreign journalist? And I was like, yeah, OK, I don't have a job anyway. So and then I started working for them. And that journalist referred me. It was by word of mouth. He, she referred me to other journalists. And then those journalists referred me to other journalists. And I ended up like earning three years worth of tuition fee. So this is the lucrative part, guys. So I think like it's very important that um, that you kind of really take the opportunity to really get the network that you gain at Hong Kong U and journalism school. So I guess what we have learned in this program is not just about news reporting, but also like other skills like fact checking and also communications. And also we, we are able to gain our unique network here. And that's all from the panel. And I'll pass the time to Celine. <coughs> Thank you, Kelly, Angela, Isabel, and Nan. So we'll now open the, open the floor for questions. So feel free to raise up your hands and our colleagues will pass you the mic. Um, we can take both English and Cantonese questions. Every student's major in this uh, subject have to practice the uh, broadcast. Yeah, I know. Not every student has to do broadcast journalism. Broadcast journalism, at least those courses, are electives. But there are some core courses like reporting and writing, video news production, online journalism. Those core courses we feel like will be relics are important for you for whatever career you go to, but things like broadcast, for example, things like audio journalism, those are electives and they're not required. So if you're not usually broadcast, that's okay. Optional. Optional, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 
So not all of our students want to be in front of the camera, no problem. Yeah, go for it. Um, I think like one thing I really, really like about the journalism school is also because um, there are electives. So you really get to choose like what you want to do. Um, for me, like I enjoyed like the online journalism courses because like it talks about like the digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not even kidding. Um, so like we actually had to build a website for that. We had to build a portfolio. So you can build your own website portfolio, which is good for like job hunting, by the way. And also like um, right now, actually, I'm working in um, Hong Kong Jockey Club, and then we kind of I did this forum, and um, I was actually given the task of building the website as well. So that was useful. And then also kind of like um, when you're in journalism school, you kind of like a one man band. So um, a lot of things, I, I, th I think especially in Hong Kong, um, you don't have just like particular, like you have a sound guy, you have a video guy, you have a um, writer. But no, in Hong Kong, you need to have all those skills. And so I think it's very um, nice that the journalism school actually let you to choose the different electives. So I chose like, um, visual um, where I did like AI, Adobe, um, or InDesign and Photoshop. And then I did like photography um, so you could take photos and then I also did like videography, um, editing and everything. So like um, that actually applied so much in my digital like content creation job that like it applies to everything. I have something to add on. Like uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in um, Brock, um, the broadcast um, TV course. So I, I took it, and so the professors, uh, I mean, the teachers are really amazing. Um, I think you worked with um, CNN before, and also um, there's a new um, teacher assistant, also from, um, he, she worked with CNN Reuters before. So, I mean, you can gain a lot of like um, amazing experience from them, yeah. I'm curious that uh, does most of the graduates pursue career related to uh, verse just like they write for some for some um, companies or many some researchers and also uh, the manager of some like uh, I don't know just like uh, departments about uh, editing is it like that thank you So as you can see, we're working in a different industry, like, and also um, they they have like a really amazing background, like not just like working the like let for example before working at for well, Isabel like before working at in a PR firm, she worked in finance, and then like uh, there are like diverse um, career paths, and some of my friends like yeah they went to elsewhere to pursue their career path in academia. And also, one of my friends went to an auction house. But yeah, like um, most of our jobs are actually um, related to writing. But I guess it's a really important skill, no matter like what kind of no, no matter what kind of jobs you're in. Oh, let me just quickly add on. Oh, my writing is not that good. Um, <laughs> let Let me just preface it. Um, but then, like the thing is, um, I think it's it's very it's very easy because like um, for journalism, you kind of learn communications. And in communications, it's really, as we all have said, that like it applies to everything. And um, it's not limited to one specific industry. Because for me, um, I went from Hong Kong Med all the way to Jockey Club. And I wasn't doing like, so I was doing digital uh, marketing in Hong Kong Med. But then right now in Hong Kong, uh, in Jockey Club, I was doing events. Um, kind of like you would think like, oh, that's like a jump in a career. It is, but then actually my skill set still applied. So there really isn't much of a concern if um, you're you're afraid of like one thing is not too good. If we have time, I'll just quickly um, add on to that. I mean, writing is required in all the jobs, not just in journalism, not just communications. You have to write emails, you have to write proposals, you have to write pitches. So it's all writing, but um, also the, the very fact that I chose broadcast journalism initially was because I didn't like writing. But little did I know there was a lot of writing involved because there was new scripts and all. Um, but also how that translates into like the private sector or corporate communications, which is something that I do very often now, would be like you need to be writing press releases, briefing documents for the bosses, um, speeches for global CEOs, um, or even in content strategy. For example, when you manage social media, right? You have to write 
for the graphics, you have to write social captions. So I would say writing and editing um, is not just a skill that's, that matters in journalism, but all walks of life. You mentioned how journalism centralizes on a more like hands-on experience. And to be frank, I'm a quite like introverted person. How do you think I could prep myself for that? Great. Who wants to be on one? Great. Well, who's introverted and why? I am introverted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might not look it. I'm very introverted, but I do think journalism works very well for introverts. Um, I'm not sure if everyone agrees, but um, journalism, um, like Kelly mentioned, um, a lot of times you have to work as a one-man band and you don't have a whole team with you, so a lot of times you're really doing deep research. Um, but then one thing that's really useful is that because journalism in you know the nature itself, you have to work with people, you're telling human stories. So it pushes you to really reach out to people and say, hey, can I interview you? So I would say maybe 10 years ago, I, I would be like, okay, that sounds so scary, like reaching out to people um, out of the blue. But now it has become like a daily thing for me. Like every day I just reach out to people out of the blue, like maybe 10, five of them every day. And I talk to like countless strangers every day. So I think if you are interested in pursuing journalism, don't worry that you're an introvert because eventually the job or the craft itself will make it work. Really quickly about that same point. Uh, yesterday I met with an advisee of my first year advisee and she said, AJ, uh, going up to interview people is so scary. All the class doesn't like to do it. You know, we don't want to talk to people. We're so scared. The funny thing is by the time they're fourth year, you talk to all the fourth years, that's nothing. That's easy. So no matter what, even if you're scared in your first year, you will get the training to become more comfortable with it. Uh, many of our students and even my colleagues are introverts, but journalism gives them an excuse to talk to people. To not just practice that, but also to learn about the world. All right? So if you're an introvert, perfect, actually. It's actually probably a perfect program for you. That's not pretty good, right? <laughs> One more. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Sarah. Okay, thank you for the wonderful admission talk. And I have a question that um, based on the architecture, um, it's just like AI and the strong and come like I just want to ask: Is the journalism job market still optimistic in the future? Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, you asked that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh. Just one sharing, like I was uh, uh, going through the slides uh, for the first time just now. You may uh, saw that there is one new course called uh, Generative AI, Gen AI for Media Application. So you will see that actually JMSC is catching up with the, not only with the state of the art facilities, right? You can see the, the, the new studio, the production room. Also we have um, new courses that will equip our students with the new technology as well, right? Gen AI. And also, I would say uh, maybe Gen AI is not an obstacle or not, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It might be a tool to facilitate how future journalists can do news reporting and writing more effectively or how facilitate um, the research in different fields um, for the better goods of our society. Actually, um, at Edelman, we started training our global staff on how to use generative AI um, on our job on a daily basis. And we have this comprehensive training where we are essentially using chat GPT to maybe help us write the first draft of press releases, social media posts, and our take on it was that the kind of output that you get from ChatGPT is basically the draft that you would get maybe from an intern. Would you actually publish an intern's work directly? Probably not. You might edit it a little bit. So how we see it is we see generative AI as a tool that will help us facilitate spend, maybe um, be, become more efficient. 
And I honestly don't think generative AI will replace us as communicators, journalists, or um, any kind of media professionals. They will just become a tool that helps us. And people who will um, still continue to be relevant in the near future is that those who know how to use generative AI. Just one, just one thing, um, because we only have a few minutes left, um, we'll end with, um, is it Anne who wants to, yeah. Um, uh, and then we will have to wrap up because we don't want to keep you guys um, from, from your other uh, info day talks, okay? So thank you to our I just, um, from a, because um, for our DJ, um, some of, um, we have an AI presenter. We also have um, AI like um, doing some of the voices. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, AI did replace part of our job, but after all, it can't replace all of like journalism job, but some um, call fact checking, or even um, yeah, like uh, or even like networking, right? So, and also, I, I just want to add on, like, yeah, we can use AI to actually help with our job, for example, like, just transcribing the, the, the speech or um, some of the interview, and also help us to, like, um, check the grammar and stuff like that. But after all, we still have to, like, write our, I would say, we're kind of working with AI right now to um, do the news reporting, and I don't think in the near, near future that my job will be really replaced, like completely replaced by AI. That's, that's all for me. Now may I introduce our director of HKU Journalism and Media, Oscar winning documentary filmmaker Rubia, to give us a closing remarks. Ruby, please. Well, thank you for coming, and AJ did a wonderful job explaining our program, and, and, but I'd like to um, really say something about, you know, uh, journalism is really about all these stuff that we mentioned. It's also about uh, storytelling, communicating your ideas to an audience. And, um, you know, the question of AI, AI will be a, a tool and it will help us maybe make more exciting uh, visuals, but it will not replace our brain. So uh, don't worry, uh, I think journalism and communication still have a bright future because you know nowadays we need more journalism and more communication as much as possible because people are, you know, after COVID, people are kind of a little afraid to go out and and they stay with the computer too much, it's, but the world needs real communicator, real connection to people. So I think that's a bright future for um, students who choose to be in our program. Thank you. Thank you.